You might be wondering why there's a whole new background or like thing behind me. It's because I'm not in my other house. This is really close. There we go, that's probably a better place to stand. Can we acknowledge that like yesterday I was, um, so close. Yesterday I was ziplining. I'm pretty sure like one of the ropes like grazed against my forehead and look at that. It's so sore. It's not really, but it's, it's like a battle scar. So as I was saying, this is not like my home home. This is like currently like where I'm living this year. Today I'm actually gonna be doing a video a wee story time because as I said in previous videos, like I moved to New York a couple of weeks and I kind of wanted to talk about the time, my first encounter in New York City, um, cause it's actually really um, eventful to say the least. When I went to New York for the first time really when I was 18, I didn't really know what New York was or how to get around New York. I knew, you know, there was a subway, I knew there was Times Square, I knew about Broadway, but I really didn't know how to navigate the city. So bear all that in mind when I get into this story. Myself and my group, one of my very good friends, Cara, we went to New York after we finished up in what, I, what would be like high school. So we went when we were 18. I was 18, she was 17. She had previously been to New York. I arrived in New York City, myself and Cara, and we got, two of us arrived together and we got, a train, no we didn't, my brother picked us up at the train station, or in JFK, and we got the subway, not the subway, we got the Long Island Railroad out to Woodside where he lives, that was all good, we had our food, we got to meet up, yada yada, that was great. My brother insisted that we get a cab to where we were living, so we were living in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, um, an area I love, I've lived there for three summers, I love that whole area, but I didn't know how to get there, Cara did. But, my brother suggested we get a cab there. He was, he was like, I feel more comfortable if you got a cab there. Um, I know you're a bit safer and just like make your way there. That's all good. So I was like, okay, let's get a cab. I'm indifferent about it. And Kara insisted she knew the way and I'm sure she did know the way, you know, if we got a subway. I'm sure she knew the way, but I was like, if we just get a cab, like I'd feel a bit more comfortable getting a cab. My first day in New York. So she said, fine. So we went down, got a cab, told the guy, told, oh, there goes the light. We tell the cab driver, we give him the exact address. Like we literally give him the cross street. We give him the entire address. I know that give him that exact address. We'll get you to where we were. Here comes the light. That light's coming back. That sun is coming again. So we gave him the address and that was all fine. He said, yep, no bother. I think he said it's going to be like 30, 40 dollars, which is totally fair knowing it now because I know that that direction and that time it takes, it is about that much in a cab. Um, and that was all fine. So we hop in the cab and the minute we hop in the cab, no, maybe five minutes, let's say. About five minutes into the journey, I kind of knew something was up. So this man, his first language was not English. That's all fine. There was no problem with that. But he got, he was on his phone the entire time. And it sounded like he was frustrated or mad or like confused. So myself and Kara sit in the back of the cab. But we're like, okay, this is fine. Like there's no, there's nothing wrong here. And we keep driving, 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 driving. And as we kept going on, he kept being re like questioning us. Where exactly is this place? What's the address? And we're like, yo, we've given you the address. You have the address, like put it into your GPS system or whatever. <laughs> I hate this story and I also love this story. So we're driving, we're probably driving for maybe 30, 45 minutes. And then he pulls up to like a curb. He's like, I don't know where I'm taking you. I don't know where you want to go. I can't find it. So we're sitting in the back of the cab. We're like, we gave you the address. You said it's going to take this much time. It's going to cost this much money. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know that, but I can't get you there. So we're like, shit. So these two people happen to be passing by on the street. And the cab driver like opens up the window like across from him and he like shouts out. So I'm like, yo, I'm really sorry, but can I use your phone? Um, I want to like put in um, an address um, on Google Maps and like find out where these kids are going in the back. We're sitting there like, please just give us your phone. Like we need to get home. Bear in mind, also I should say that we had specified, so we were living with my with Kara's aunt. I need to specify that we had given her a time that we were going to be back at the apartment for back at her place in Brooklyn, in Prospect Park. And we at this stage were running probably an hour late. Maybe 45 minutes to an hour late. So she was questionably wondering where we were. I mean, I'm sure she was already wondering where we were because we weren't there. And then these people are so kind, they gave us the phone, and he puts in the address. And I had this really weird memory of like looking at the, I don't know where we were, in, or I was gonna say Brooklyn, I don't know where he pulled up. I couldn't tell you where the heck we were. But all I remember is that like, it must have been a really, it was a really, it was a really warm day because it was like, mid-June and I remember like we must be like beside like a white probably like what's behind me like a quite creamy building because I remember the sun was like glaring onto it and it was just I remember looking around the place and everything was so bright that's just I don't know not important 
So he gives us his phone anyway, they give us the phone and we're putting put in the address for where we're going, the cross street, the exact address like we had already given him, but he can't seem to find his way there. And he looks at me and he goes, oh no, I'm taking you the wrong way. This is not the way we have to go. That's going to be an extra hundred dollars to get you from here to there. And we were like, hold up. We don't have that kind of money. You said it's going to be $40, yada, yada. So he already was telling us from there that it's going to be $140 or whatever it was. It was over hundred something dollars. We were like, we don't have that kind of cash on us. Like, not a hope in hell. We're not paying that. And you told us it was going to take this much time and you already knew where we are going. Then he starts getting mad and agitated. As if we're by any means doing anything wrong. We were not doing anything wrong. He had specified how long it was going to take to get there, how much it was going to be. And this was the flat fare price that we were going to have to pay. We had no cash on us. Oh wait, I lie actually, but I'll tell you a second. We had very, very little cash on us, which is arguably a mistake on our part. Who knows? It's history though. So we're in the back of the cab and he was like, it's gonna cost an extra $100 on top of what I already cost you. So I think it was like $140, $150 he was looking for. Um, and we were like, we don't have the kind of money that we're getting out now. This is bull shit. We're getting out. So we start hopping out of the cab and we walk, walk around to the back of the cab to take our bags out of the boot and he won't open it and we're like open this boot like we're not getting this cab we're not paying money for you to bring us somewhere that we didn't ask you to bring us to and now you're charging us extra to get from here to there and he was like nope 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 so he hops out of the cab now this is a big man like a big man he hops out of the cab and he's like you're not going anywhere until you pay me and i remember cara i must have grabbed my suitcase out of the back of the taxi because Kara then put her hand in and he put his hand down on her suitcase and like would not let her grab it, take it out he's like no you're not going anywhere until you pay me now looking back on it he was totally in the wrong because he had specified it's going to be this much money yada 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 but the fact that he had brought us to a totally random location and then wanted to charge us an extra hundred dollars like i feel like he genuinely just was taking us for a ride and he was like no i'm gonna get as much money out of these people as i can and then i was like searching my pockets and my brother had just given me cash i'd say literally mo no more than 40 dollars cash because he owed me for something thank goodness i had that cash because i literally just ripped out the 40 dollars from my pocket i threw it at him i was like literally i was like take this money this is all we have good luck like we are out of here he was really frustrated we were frustrated it was really getting tense he takes, takes his hands off Kara's bag and then takes my cash and then he literally, we rip our bags from the back of the cab and then he hops back in the cab and he drives off. We hadn't a clue where we were. We literally stood there in the middle of the street, stranded. Literally, it was very, very quiet street. Stranded, there was nobody around. We had no phone to contact anyone. We had little to no cash. It was a baptism of freaking fire. And this movie started to like panic. Well, I don't know if I really panicked. I feel like I was just like in this like weird place where I was like, holy shit, I'm in New York. I'm good, like I'll figure things out. But obviously like it really like wasn't <laughs> a good situation for us to be in at the time. So we kind of started walking around wherever we were looking for help. And we're walking around, walking around, walking around and this girl or in, someone walks by like a girl or someone and we're like sorry we're really sorry but can you like show us where the nearest subway station is because Karen knew that if she if we could find our way to a subway station like we could get our way back out to Prospect Park so the girl was so kind she's really good we literally like we're so sorry we don't know where we are like can you help us like we're really poor like we need to get home and she was like yeah no bother so she sent us onto the subway and uh, sent us in the direction of the subway we got our way to the subway station I, was, I remember <laughs> I was hopeless in this scenario. I remember like going down is the subway station and Cara like ran to the you know the way they the, those they used to have um someone helping downstairs in the subway where they have someone not all subway stations but a lot of subway stations have an individual that's downstairs and they sell tickets or they provide information. And Cara like went to that person. I remember like I was looking down. Uh, I went down into the subway station and oh I remember there's like an MTA map in front of me, subway map. And I went up the subway map and I was staring at it and I remember just being like, oh, so this is a real, this is a real New York map. This is a real subway station. Oh my God, I'm in a subway station. Hopeless. I was of no use to get us back to Brooklyn. I was literally in my own little world. Kara could have walked off and I would have sat there on the ground being like, mm, yeah, look at this. This is real New York City dirt. Mm, that's a real New York City subway rat. Like, hopeless. I told her we were trying to go to, she was like, right, gotta get this train back into Manhattan. And then you gotta get this train back out to Prospect Park. 
Because if anyone's been to New York before, often you have to like get a subway into New York. Especially if you're going between the boroughs, you have to like get a subway into Manhattan to get back out. It makes total sense when you're there. Kind of sounds a little bit silly now, but I'm telling you, it all makes sense. So we came into Manhattan and we have to transfer trains. So we're walking through the subway and I remember saying, so we were give or take close to an hour and a half late. Like we were close to an hour and a half late from the point we told Kara's aunt we'd be at her house for. And I remember like we were walking by like when the subway exits. I remember like looking up and I could see like the bright light of like the sunlight where Manhattan was above us. And I was like, oh Kara, come on, like let's go for a quick look. And Kara was like, no Sean, like let's go to the train. We have to go now. Hopeless I was. And I was pure like naive and I was like, okay, fine. Like, I was pure upset about it. Then we make our way to the Q train and we get the Q train all the way out to Prospect Park. I can't explain it and I'll tell you why. Because we got to Prospect Park and Kara's aunt is very close to the subway station and we were coming out of the, of the subway station and we kind of got to a street and we didn't know where to go. Like I would be, I would be very good at directions when I know, when I've been there like once before, but Kara didn't really know how to get from, or she couldn't remember or something along the lines that. So we come out to the subway station and there's like a right which goes to the park and there's a left which goes down to Flappish Avenue. And we stood there and I, th I think Kara was like, I'm pretty sure and Kara said, I don't know where to go. Like I can't remember how to get back to her house. So I was there and I cannot explain it for the life of me, but when I was there, I just kind of knew and I for the life of me cannot explain to this day how I knew to get to her aunt's house. I'd never been there before. I'd never been to Brooklyn before. I cannot for the life of me explain. It took a second outside. Her, her aunt lives in a beautiful brownstone in Brooklyn and we're at the bottom of the steps up to her house and we like, took a minute to like clean ourselves and I like, just make sure we didn't look flustered because we knew that when we knocked on the door like we were going to be like hey what's the crack you know act like nothing was wrong so we cleaned ourselves and started making our way up the steps and knock on the door and then we completely put up this act where we were like we knew that we couldn't tell anyone we had been stranded and left for dead that's <laughs> so dramatic we weren't actually but we couldn't tell anyone what had happened because we were afraid that people would be like oh like we were there for five weeks we just arrived for a five-week trip and we were afraid that people would be like our parents at home would be like panicking and be like oh my god like are you guys okay even though we're totally fine but they'd be like worried about us so we put up this act and we went in the door we're like oh we acted like we got there on time we lost track of time whatever it was and we didn't actually tell our parents until we came home five weeks later what happened to us because we I feel like our parents would have like totally panicked if we told them that this guy had taken advantage of us, took our cash, left us in the middle of nowhere, you know, was very unfair to us, like wouldn't let us take our bags. It's all, it's, it's not very nice. The thing about New York is like, I feel like New York is like, it's like go hard or go home or like it's a dog eat dog world. Like it is so true and like I feel like for some people that's not their vibe and like New York is so fast paced and everything is go 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 and that is so true. It's very much go go go, it's very fast paced and like you have to really stand your ground in New York City. Like you can't let people walk all over you. And that I feel like for us was like the most rude awakening in the best way possible for New York City. Like I love New York City. Kara loves New York City. Like we had this really interesting, difficult first experience in New York. I mean, it wasn't her first experience, but it was really my first experience. And it was like a rude awakening for like our five week trip. But anyways, that's the end of the story of the time I was trying to New York City. And I still love the city somehow. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoy that story. I hope it made some sense because I smiled the whole time because I just love reminiscing on, on these old memories of whatever. So I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.